All right, Shalom. Before I get started with this lesson, I want to give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shai Bahashem, Rakakwadash. Double honors to my elders and apostles of Great Millstone who taught me this truth. Double salutation to all you Akim out there laboring. The house of David is pushing this word with all truth, righteousness, and sincerity. Shalom to you, brothers. So I'm back at you with another quick lesson through the Holy Spirit. And I'm going to jump straight into this article here. This is from mredeem.com. The title it reads, it says, The True Origins of Christmas, Child Sacrifice, Nimrod, Christmas Tree Santa. Okay? And in this article, I just want to highlight a couple of paragraphs concerning the reasons why Yahweh Shem Shai said to not follow the traditions of men, nor the customs of the heathen. All right. And out of willful ignorance, you pagan Israelites, you so-called Christians. OK, you refuse to let go of these wicked pagan holidays, man. OK, which have nothing to do with the Holy Scriptures. All right. Here it is in 2020. You still got niggas holding on to these holidays, man, and Christmas and all of that. All right. And see, and that's why you how about Shai is going to judge two thirds of our people, man. All right, because they refuse to let go of these um of these pagan demonic holidays, man. All right, the Lord said that His people were a rebellious people. Okay, because Jake don't care, he he don't consider the the origins of this stuff, man. Where all this stuff goes back to, all right, which has nothing to do with the Bible. You know, so like I said, I'm just gonna read this article. It's a long article. I'll leave it in the um in the description box. Okay. But uh, just jumping down, getting straight to the point. All right. It says, um, <clears throat> it says, wishing you a happy Saturnalia, a reason for the season. All right. Which all this stuff goes back to Saturn, Saturnalia, sun worship. All right. Nimrod, all of that stuff, man. But we're going to read a little bit of it. It says, consider these quotes from the from the Catholic Encyclopedia. 1911 edition under quote unquote Christmas. It says Christmas was not among the earliest festivals of the church. The first evidence of the feast is from Egypt. You see? So Christmas goes all the way back to Egypt, man. You know, the pagan customs of Egypt. It says further, pagan customs centering around the January calends gravitated to, to Christmas. Under the natal day, origin and early Catholic writer admitted in the scriptures, no one is recorded to have kept a feast or held a great banquet on his birthday. It is only sinners like Pharaoh and Herod who make great rejoicings over the day, over the day on which they were born into this world. Quote, you see that? Jumping down. It says in. The, the Encyclopedia Americana 1956 edition adds, quote, Christmas was not observed in the first centuries of the Christian church. Since the Christian usage in general was to celebrate the death of remarkable persons rather than their birth, a feast was established in memory of this event, so-called Christ's birth in the fourth century. In the fifth century, the Western church ordered the feast to be celebrated on the day of the mithric, mithric rites of the birth of the sun and close and at the close of the Saturn Saturnalia Saturnalia as no certain knowledge of the day of so-called Christ's birth existed you see that so the Messiah wasn't born on December 25th that's not of the scriptures all right and like he was saying, all this stuff goes back to the birth of the sun. All right, sun worship, man. You know, Egypt, man. It says, it was only in the latter days when Mithric cult was being overcome that Christians took the 25th of December, the day celebrated by followers, by the followers of Mithras, as the day of soul Invictus for their Christmas. Carl Jung, uh, 19, 1925, seminar page 113. 
okay? It says, um, it says, there's no mistaking that the origin of the modern Christmas celebration, many additional sources would could be cited, and we will return to this later. Let's begin to tie some other facts together. It says it was three hundred. It was three hundred years after so-called Christ before the Roman before the Roman Church kept Christmas, and not until the fifth century that it was mandated to be kept throughout the throughout the empire as an official fest, festival honoring so-called Christ. All right. So let's get the scriptures real quick, and I'll read on some more. All right. But this is uh Second Kings chapter 17 verse 7 all right and as you can see in the caption it says why israel fell okay and this is why we fell as a nation from keeping these customs of the heathen man okay let's read on it it says uh second uh second kings chapter 17 verse 7 and it reads it says for so it was the children of israel had sinned against the lord yahweh by shema washah their power which had brought them up out of the land of egypt from under the hand of pharaoh king of Egypt and, and had feared other gods. Verse 8, it says, And walked in the statues of the heathen, whom the Lord Yehovah Shemuel Shai cast out from, from, from before the children of Israel and, and, and of the kings of Israel, which they have made. All right? And Jake is still doing that to this day. Still walking in the statues and the customs of the heathen. Just like back then. Verse 9, 2 Kings chapter 17, verse 9, it says, And the children of Israel did secretly those things that were not right against the Lord, Yahweh by Shemuel, Shah, their power. Same thing going on today. You know, still holding on these pagan holidays, still worshiping these uh, uh, these these uh, um, these rituals in secret. You know, it says, And they built them high places in all their cities, from the tower of the watchman to the fenced city. And they set them up images in groves in every high hill and under every green tree. You know, verse 11, it says, and they burnt incense in all the high places as did, as did the heathen whom the Lord, Yahweh Shem Shai, carried away before them and wrought, and wrought wicked things to provoke the Lord to anger. And that's, and, and Jake is still doing that, man. Okay? Still holding on to these pagan holidays, provoking Yahweh Shemuel Shah to anger, man. You know, because cause these so-called Christians, you know, these pagan Israelites, they'll justify their ways and in, in to keep and to continue to keep these um these so-called holidays, you know. Verse 12. It says, For they serve idols. Whereof the Lord Yahweh Shem Shah has said unto them, Ye shall not do this thing, you know. So all of this stuff is still is still going on, man. You know? Verse 13 it says, Yet the Lord Yahweh Shem Shah testified against Israel, against Judah, by all the prophets, and by all the seers, saying, Turn ye from your evil ways, and keep and keep my commandments and my statutes according to all the law which I commanded your fathers which I sent to you by my servants, the prophets. And this is what the prophets telling Jake in this very time. Okay. It says, verse 14, Notwithstanding, they would not hear, but harden the necks to the neck of their fathers that did not believe in the Lord, Yahweh Shem Shai, their power. Okay. So the, the, Jake is still being rebellious. You know, still holding on. Let's read some more. You know, it's a lot of a lot of heavy stuff in here, but I'm just getting straight to the point. It says, who is Saturn? All right, it says, previous quotes introduce the subject of Saturn, Saturnalia. Let's carefully study just exactly who Saturn was, considering the following quote from another large American newspaper, the Democrat and, Chron and Chronicle, Rochester, New York, December 1984, it says, quote, the Roman festival of Saturn Saturnalia, December 17th to the 24th, moved citizens to decorate their homes with greens, with greens and lights and give gifts to children and poor. The December 25th festival of, of Nat Natalis Sol Solis Invicti, the birth of the unconquered son, was decreed by the emperor Erulian in, in AD 
274 as a winter solstice celebration. You know, all this stuff going back to what? Winter solstice, sun worship, all right? Uh, uh, um, uh, Nimrod, you know, it says, and sometime later was Christianized as a date to celebrate the birth of the sun of light. You see? Dr. William Gutch, chairman of the American Museum of Natural History, Hating Planetarium further confirmed that the original name of Christmas with this quote on December 18th, 1989 in a, in a Westchester, New York newspaper, the report dispatch, quote, the early Romans were not celebrating Christmas, but rather a pagan feast called Saturn Saturnalia. It occurred each year. It occurred each year around the beginning of winter or the winter solstice. This was the time when the sun had taken its lowest path across the sky and the days were beginning to lengthen, thus assuring another season of growth. All right. So this is what so-called Christmas goes back to. All right. It says, quote, if many of the trappings of Saturn, Saturn, Leah, Saturn, Leah, however, seem to parallel what so many of us do today, we can see where we borrow our holiday traditions. And indeed it has been suggested that while so-called Christ was, was most likely not born in late December, the early Christians, then still an outlawed sect, moved Christmas to the time of Saturn, Saturnalia to draw as little attention as possible to themselves while they celebrated their own holiday. Okay? It says... Read a little bit more. It says Saturn and Leo, of course, celebrated Saturn. The fire god Saturn was the god of sowing, planted because heat from the sun was required to allow plant for allowing planting and, and the growth of crops. He was also worshipped in in the, in this in this dead of of winter festival, so that he would come back. He was the quote sun, and warm the earth again, so that the spring planting could uh, could occur. The planet Saturn was later named after him because among all the planets with his rings and bright red color it, it best re represented the god of fire virtually every civilization has a fire slash sun god the egyptians sometimes romans called him vulcan the greeks named him chronos as the phoenicians but they also called him saturn the babylonians called him tammuz as nimrod Resurrected in, in the person of his son, Molech or Baal, as did the Druids. These were all simply the various names for Nimrod. Nimrod was considered the father of all the Babylonian gods, you see? So this is all the origins of, of all of this stuff, man. You know, child sacrifice, you know, goes into who who is Nimrod, you know, Molech and all of that. And you brothers can, can read this. Like I said, it's a long article. Okay, but the point of the matter has been it's been made. All right, all this stuff goes back to Nimrod, sun worship, winter solstice, solst uh, solstice, you know, the Yule. Okay, so this has nothing to do uh, uh, with the scriptures, as you can see. All right, let's get this article real quick. I mean, it's uh, the scripture, Salakia. All right, this is uh, Jeremiah ten. And one, and it reads, it says, Hear ye the word of the Lord, which the, which the Lord, Yahweh Shemuel Shai, speak of unto you, O house of Israel. Thus saith the Lord, Yahweh Shemuel Shai, learn not the way of the heathen, okay, which we just read in this article, okay? Learn not the way of the heathen, man. And be not dismayed at the signs of heaven, for the heathen are dismayed at them. Verse 3, for the customs of the people are in vain. For one cutteth a tree out of the forest, the works of the hands of the workmen with an axe. They deck it with silver and with gold. They fasten it with nails, with hammers that it move not. Going back to what? To that damn Christmas tree. You know? Which all goes back to the worshipping of, Nim of Nimrod, man. You know? Which you, can, which you can pull up information on that. Okay? It says... 
for they are upright as a palm tree, but speak not. They must needs be, be born because they cannot go. Be not afraid of them, for they cannot do evil. Neither also is it in them to do good. All right. Which is the point? You know. Psalms 135. And verse 14, it says, For the Lord, Yahweh Shemiahu will judge his people, and he will repent himself concerning his servants. It says, The idols of the heathen are silver and gold and the work of men's hands. They have mouths, but they speak not. Eyes ha have they, but they see not. It says, they have ears, but they hear not. Neither is there any breath in their mouths. They that make them are like unto them. So is everyone that trusted in them, man. You know? So the point, you know, like I said, I just want to bring this out. You know, all this stuff is, it goes back to, to pagan, heathenistic worship, man. All right? And it has nothing to do with the scriptures. You know, like I said, you brothers can read the rest on your own. You know, all the information is there concerning uh, uh, Christmas and these other wicked holidays, you know, and the origins where they go back to, you know. So let go of this shit, man, you know. Ca uh, cast off the ways of the heathen. Call Halayim uh, Layah, how about Shema Washai? Double honors to my elders and apostles, a great millstone who taught me this truth. Double salutation to all you Akimata laboring. Hey, Shalom.